Hey YouTube, matches 860. Smoking some Peretti blend number 500 in a Peretti pipe. Decided I'd tell a little story. Kind of do a review at the same time. If I can keep this pipe lit. Back in the mid 1990s. I picked up uh, a lot of estate pipes at antique stores. Quite often they came in uh, pipe racks. <clears throat> the uh, dealers would put the pipes in just for prop purposes. So I'd get a stand for uh, 25 bucks and get a few pipes for nothing. Got back home and I cleaned this pipe up and noticed that the uh, shank was stamped with a name. L.J. Peretti. didn't mean anything to me at the time, but uh, first time I smoked the pipe, very quickly became one of my favorites. And uh, it was such a favorite that I ended up, I think I chewed the end of the stem off. And uh, right about that same time was when I took the trip up to Vermont to uh, Pimo, the pipe making supplier. Decided for the heck of it, when I went up I'd take this pipe with me and see if he could suggest a new stem for it. So. Uh, got up there and we were shooting the bull and he seemed like a nice guy so I asked him I said you know can you fix my pipe for me and he looked at it and he goes oh it's a Peretti I said yeah does that mean something <laughs> he knew I was from the Boston area he started laughing so he told me the whole story about LJ Peretti tobacconist and how they had been in Boston forever. So he uh, took the pipe, it took him probably uh, five or ten minutes fitting the new stem so that it was perfect. The whole time he was working on it I thought, uh oh, I wonder what this is going to cost me. He only ended up uh, charging me a couple of bucks for the stem, which was great. So I was able to smoke it again, and this has always been sort of an after-hours favorite pipe of mine. You might hear a gurgle out of it, and that was the one bad thing about it. delivers fantastic tobacco taste while you're smoking it, but it does tend to uh, smoke wet. Anyway, fast forward to a couple of weeks ago. 
I got a private message on YouTube from somebody I didn't recognize the name and uh, he said he was going to Boston from the West Coast. He was going to pick up some stuff at Peretti's and he wanted to know if he could send me some stuff. I wrote back and said it had always been a goal of mine to get up to Peretti's. I must have passed the place at least a dozen times when I was hanging around Boston. So sure enough, last week got a big box of uh, samples from Peretti's and this Blend 500 was one of them. It's a uh, Virginia Havana Cigar Leaf Perique and Orientals. For any of my uh, followers who like John Patton's Dark Horse, this is along the same line. It's got a little bit more depth to it uh, as far as the cigar leaf goes. Fantastic. The other blends he sent, uh, mostly English, although there is uh, a burley base, uh, no frills, 333 I think is the number. Fantastic also. I was mostly surprised. He sent me an aromatic, and everybody knows I don't do aromatics. Although, you will catch me smoking uh, Stanwell vanilla now and then. This wild cherry that he sent from Peretti's reminded me of that because the wild cherry doesn't dominate the tobacco flavor that you're looking for. Very subtle, but it's there, it's enjoyable. So, if you ever get the chance uh, to sample any of Peretti's tobaccos, I can tell you the six that I've tried. Very, very good stuff. If you happen to be in Boston, Peretti's is located across from the Boston Common. All you got to do is cross Boylston Street uh, at Charles. If you're on mass transportation, or the T as they call it there, if you get off at Arlington or Boylston, you'll be within short walking distance. I'm going to get up there one of these days. So that's my little Peretti story. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.